Hello everybody, it's Amanda here at Jump, Jiggle and Jive. So we're still in lockdown and um, I've been working on making classes that, that you can just um, click into on the website. And so we're working on that and I've also been looking at what I've got in the house that I've been clearing out, sorting out and um, not having any dump to put anything. So I haven't got as far as the attic particularly, but I did bring out one box in the attic. And uh, what I found were some well-loved tales, and I think you might be interested to see them. So the first one is um, the Three Billy Goats Gruff. Does everybody remember that? And uh, it's lovely. The next one I was really super, super excited to find. And, um, and I do want to show you what it looks like on the inside. And it is The Princess and the Frog. This was my favourite ever story and the pictures are just glorious inside and just make me, oh, it's lovely. Another one I loved was Tom Thumb. Here he is and he's inside his, he's inside his shell. And I do, I, do, I want to read these and I thought, well, I'm not sure I could just read these for everybody. And uh, so <laughs> you might have story time with Amanda. And then the next one is uh, The Big Pancake, which is very funny, very, very funny. And um, do you know, I can't find the other one. Um, it was uh, Cook Little Pot Cook. Do you remember that one? Somewhere in the house, but uh, it wasn't in this box of books. And another one, Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, I love it. I love it. And uh, so I thought, hey, what I could do instead of jump to go and jiving is actually read you one of these stories and maybe the boys and girls like to listen or maybe just you would love my you love my voice so much that uh, you would be happy to read it so look at that isn't that beautiful and uh, you could just even talk about what is on these trees we're wondering is there is that the same inside yes inside each book um yeah, they've all got the same inside. I had actually never noticed that before. So there you go. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure. Do I do I read my favourite one? So this princess, I loved. I loved her. I, I just loved it. It's just my well-loved, beautiful book. And she's crying. She's sad because she has to love this frog and she doesn't want to love the frog. Would you like to love the frog? Wouldn't like to love the frog at all. So you know, this is called The Princess and the Frog. Look at her dress. Look at her crown. Look at her castle and look at that marvellous golden ball. So this is just um, just a dream come true to look at that picture. Once upon a time there lived a king who had seven beautiful daughters, but all of his daughters, the youngest, was the most beautiful. And look at that. I want that dress. This princess had one favourite among all her toys, and it was a golden ball. Well, I want that golden ball. And she spent many hours throwing it up into the air and catching it and just being perfect. Oh, I love her. I just loved it. And I still love it. Here she goes. Where is she going? Near the king's castle was a huge, dense forest, and under a big tree on the edge of the forest there was a deep, dark pool. On a hot day it was pleasant to rest under the cool shade of the tree by the pool, and the princess often went there to play by herself. Isn't it beautiful? And the birds are there and the lily pads are there, and it is just a lovely romantic place that she goes to play. There she is, and she's got her crown still on. The youngest princess used to run about on the grass near the pool, throwing up her golden ball and catching it, just like we do in Jump, Jiggle and Jive. One day, however, when the princess threw up her ball, it did not fall into her outstretched hands. It fell onto the grass and bounced into the deep pool with a loud splash. Uh-oh, I think she's lost it. Oh dear goodness, what's she going to do? Oh, she's crying. The princess could not bear to think that she had really lost her golden ball. It was beautiful. She began to cry. And the more she thought about the loss of her favourite toy, the louder she cried. Oh! 
As the princess wept, she heard a voice say, Why do you weep, young princess? What's wrong? Who's talking to her? Can you see anybody in that picture that might be talking to her? No, I don't know who's talking to her. Who is it? It's a frog. The princess looked up to see who was speaking to her. She could not see anybody nearby. There was only a frog sitting on the edge of the pool, so she's looking around. Sure, a frog wouldn't talk to you. So she said to the frog, I'm crying because my beautiful golden ball has fallen into the deep pool. Oh, but can you imagine losing your favourite ball and it was gold? And I, you know, that's, I would cry. I would cry. Here we go. Do not cry, said the frog. I can help you get your ball. But what will you give me if I find it for you? Oh, I give you anything you wish for, replied the princess. You can have my clothes or my jewellery or even my golden crown here. Look, please find my golden ball. Would you give your crown away to get your ball back? Ooh, maybe. If it was your favourite ball. I look at this glorious picture. She gets dying to see the frog. But the frog says, I do not want your clothes or your jewellery or even your golden crown, replied the frog. I should like you to love me. I want you to let me to be, my, be your friend and play with you. I want to sit beside you at your table, eat from your golden plate and drink from your golden cup. And I want to sleep in your bed beside you. I don't know. Do I really want? I'm sure she had to think, do I really want the golden ball? I do want my golden ball. It's my favourite. It is pure gold and I love it. And maybe I'll say yes. So what did she do? If you will promise me these things, went on the frog, I shall dive down into the deep pool and find your golden ball. Do you promise? The princess thought that the frog was talking a lot of nonsense and also she wanted her golden ball very much. So she said, yes, I, I promise all that you ask. If only you will find my golden ball for me. And at these words, the frog dived into the pool. And look, it makes me think it's so like jump, jiggle and jive. <laughs> the frog is diving into the pool. The princess has got her crown on. Does she believe that he's going to bring back the ball? She's very hopeful. What has happened? The frog dived deep into the pool and soon came swimming up again with the golden ball in his mouth. He threw the ball onto the grass and the princess was so happy to see her favourite plaything once again. She picked it up and laughed with delight as she threw it into the air and caught it again, just like us. <gasps> threw that ball and catch. Well done. Then she turned her back on the frog and the pool and she ran away through the forest towards her father's castle. And I bet she was holding the golden balls. I've got it back. Wait for me. Wait for me, croaked the poor frog. I can't run as fast as you can. And he hopped along behind, trying to catch up with the princess. But she did not turn around, but she just kept running away. It wasn't very nice, was it? What's happening here? The next day, the young princess was sitting at dinner with the king his courtiers and the other princesses. As she ate from her little golden plate, the frog found his way into the great hall of the castle and he jumped up from the step and up the marble staircase. And when he got to the top, he knocked on the door of the dining room. Youngest princess, open the door for me, he cried. He made it into the castle and now he's at the dining room and he wants to eat with her. Ooh. The princess ran to the door to see who was calling her. When she saw that it was the frog, she was afraid. She slammed the door shut quickly and went back to her place at the dining table. The king saw that his daughter was afraid and said, My child, what has frightened you? 
Is there a giant outside the door who wishes to carry you away? Oh dear father, replied the princess, there's no giant outside the door, only a horrible slimy frog. What does the frog want with you? asked the king. The princess told her father what had happened in the forest the day before. I promised him that he could live with me, she said, but I never, th I never thought he would come so far away from the water. Silly girl. What do we see? Just then, another dock was knock was heard on the door. Youngest princess, hear me call. Remember you lost your golden ball. As you played by yourself beside the pool, I dived into the water cool. And your ball I find and return to you. Now please remember your promise true to take me along to live with you. He made a poem. He certainly wants to come in. Oh, can you imagine? Look at the cane and his lovely pink cry. Oh, what's going to happen? When a promise is made, it must be kept, said the king to his daughter. Go and open the door. The youngest princess went and opened the door. As she turned to her chair, the frog hopped behind her. And when she sat down, the frog said, Put me on the table beside you, please. The princess hesitated, but the king told her, Do as the frog asks. Oh my goodness, I think she's a little bit in trouble. Wait, do you see this picture? Oh! <laughs> Look at that. What is he doing? <gasps> He's at the table eating the dinner. Well, when the frog was at the table, he said to the princess, Please push your little golden plate nearer to me and then we can eat together from the same plate. Princess did so, but very unwillingly, and she barely touched her food, and each mouthful seemed to choke her. The frog, however, enjoyed every bite he ate, and he even put a big bib on. Look what he did right his neck. <laughs> Looks like he's got some salmon. Oh, I wonder if he likes salmon. Probably does he eat fish and lots of vegetables, and he's able to eat with a big golden fork. What can you imagine? Oh dear, what is going to happen next? I'm so excited. Shall I tell you? Let's see. What's happening now? She's crying. She doesn't like him. When he had finished eating, the frog turned to the princess and said, Now I am tired. Please take me to your room and we will lie on your little silken bed and go to sleep. At this, the princess burst into tears. She did not like to touch the cold little frog and she could not bear to think of him beside her in her own bed. I wouldn't like that either. <laughs> oh my goodness. <gasps> but her daddy wasn't happy. Oh dear, he said. The king got angry and he spoke sternly to his daughter. If someone helps you when you are in trouble, he said, you cannot afterwards turn your back on him. Take the frog with to your take the frog with you to your room now. So the princess had to pick up the frog and take him to her room. Look at her beautiful room. She's got big pink oh, curtains, a beautiful bed, and she has to take a green frog to bed with her. Can you believe it? Oh dear. Oh dear, she wasn't very nice. Look what she's done. He's not on the bed with her. She put him in the corner. She put him in the corner of the room as far as possible from the bed and then she got into her silken bed and turned her back on him. I think I might do that too. Once more the frog spoke up. I too am tired, he said. I want to sleep beside you on your silken sheets. Please lift me up. Would you? I don't know if I would. Oh, it would be, it'd be a very hard day. Very hard day. Do you want to know what happens? Here we go. Oh, she's crying, but look, he's on her pillow. Again, the princess began to weep. If you do not lift me into your bed, 
went on the frog. I shall have to tell the king, your father. The princess knew she had no choice, for her father would insist that she kept her promise. So, with tears running down her face, she picked up the frog, climbed back into bed, and put him on the silken pillar beside her. Look at him! Look how sad she is! Oh my goodness! He might be a bit wet and smelly. Mm. What could possibly happen next? It's a big surprise. No sooner had she done that the so no sooner had she done so that the frog had turned no sooner had she done this, the frog turned into a handsome prince. Look at him, isn't he glorious in his big red cloak? Not only was he handsome, but he had a kind face, and he smiled gently at the startled princess. The frog turned into a prince. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. Then he told her how he had been bewitched by a wicked witch, who turned him into a frog, and the spell could only be broken if a beautiful princess would take this frog as her companion, live with him, eat with him, and sleep with him. Look at that. She was... <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Can you? I would love it. Actually, I might take a frog. I might bring a frog. What's going to happen now? They're in love. They're in love. The prince told the princess how he had often watched her playing with her golden ball in the forest and how he had fallen in love with her. Dear princess, will you marry me? He asked. And the princess looked into his kind face and agreed to do as he asked. She said, yes, I'll marry you. I love you too. She loves the frog, everybody. Oh, look at this beautiful picture. Oh, look. Look at that glorious picture. Then, hand in hand, they went to tell the king what had happened. The next day they set off in a carriage driven by six white horses. They travelled to the kingdom of the prince's father. When they arrived, there was great rejoicing at the return of their prince, who had not been seen for many years because he was a frog. Now this is the best picture. This is the glorious picture, the picture of dreams this was. So sometimes later, some time later, the prince and the princess were married and they live happily ever after. What do you see? Look. Oh, look at that beautiful picture. The golden ball was kept in their palace inside a special glass case and rested on a purple cushion. Well, well, well. I do want to marry a prince like that. Look at that beautiful picture. I remember that picture from my childhood. It was beautiful. The end of the story. This is called The Princess and the Frog. Well, well, well. This is amazing. And I hope you enjoyed that. I might read another one. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And if not, sure. I kept you entertained for a while. Okay, bye. Uh, let's